What's going on, y'all? I'm here to talk about one of my favorite Gen 9 mons. It's a Titan. Bro, they're so, so cool. And before I get into all these crazy buffs and changes for this guy, I do want to have a quick disclaimer for any new viewers. First of all, welcome to my channel. Shout out to you. I appreciate you clicking on this video. Sorry if it's not what you were expecting, but uh, you can always um, pause the video and read the description down below because there's a lot of really important uh, disclaimers and background information about how this ROM hack is balanced and how it works. Uh, link down below in bullet point form. And once you're done with the video, you can also watch the playlist I have linked down below for the other Pokemon changes, for the videos explaining the hack more in depth if that interests you. Although, honestly, the bullet point should cover the, the gist of it. Um, if you know, it's basically if you prefer watching videos instead of reading, you can do that. If you prefer reading instead of watching or listening, then you can do that. Um, or you can do both. I appreciate you regardless. Um, there's also a Discord server link down below that you can join, get live updates on the hack, and then most importantly, or I don't know about most importantly, but importantly, there's also the Google Sheet link down below, which you can check out all the changes for uh, yourself on. Um, and there's also this move sheet, which has all of the move bust and changes, which are very easy to understand once you actually get the grasp of like how I balance things. Um, so you can click on all these categories and it'll take you there. Uh, and that's that. Uh, now on the topic of the Titan. Yeah, like I said, it's, gonna, I think it's weirdly loud, man. Hopefully my voice isn't too drowned out by it. But um, yeah, I really do love these guys. Uh, they are now a two-stage pseudo. And I was doing this back in Sweltering Sun regardless of... If this was a real thing in Pokemon, because it doesn't matter, you know, I can do whatever I want at the end of the day, and I think it's cool to have more than just three stage dragon pseudos. Um, and BST in general in this hack is pretty arbitrary. Like, every Pokemon is going to be incredible regardless if it's 480 BST or 600. So don't focus too much on the numbers. Obviously, the numbers are important, but uh, like, if something is lower BST, it's still going to be great from the beginning to the end of the game, and I will make sure of that. Um, so it doesn't really matter that they're all very good and fun to use regardless. Um, but in this case, 600 BSD definitely fits. I mean, he's literally like a giant land whale. And that's uh, also, now there actually is precedent to actually do this in the real games because of uh, mons like Archalodon, who is a 600 BSD two-stage mon. That is like canon now. Now I can actually do this and be like, yeah, well, it's just like Archalodon. You, you can suck my dick because that's what it is. Um, obviously, I would do it regardless because it's just cool. Um, but yeah, now I, now I can point to our childhood on, which is cool. Uh, and yeah, so, so Titan definitely fits that bill, 100%. Uh, there will be several more of these. There's also something I like to call semi-pseudos, which are 575 BST. But I'm not going to get too hung up on all this because I want to actually talk about the Titan itself. And even Satato, because Satato you're using for a lot of the game. Uh, all of the other two-stage pseudos evolve at level 40. So keeping Satato until level 40 might look rough if you don't really know how all these abilities synergize with the moves. And how the game works in general, but you also might look at this and be like, damn, so Tato's goaded. Um, hopefully you're the latter, but if you're not, I'll convince you because it actually unironically is very good and you could low-key actually keep Satato. I mean, you could keep it the whole game if you like Satato more than Satitan for whatever reason, but at the very least you could delay for a bit because it, number one, it is bulkier than Satitan with the Violet. Obviously Satitan can run an actual item and be naturally bulkier. I mean, 170, 90, 80 is, is crazy bulk. It definitely makes up for the fact that Ice has no uh, natural resist outside of itself. Um, I did swap out Thick Vat for Intimidate because Thick Vat is kind of ass. I'm not, I, okay, it's not horrible, but it, literally all it does is it gives you a four times ice resist and then a neutrality to fire. Like, I don't... Who the fuck cares, man? You know, like, just... <laughs> Intimidate is, is, is definitely uh, overall better and definitely fits them very well uh, in terms of their appearance and their overall energy that they exude. Um, and I also like giving them a combo of a defensive slash utility ability and offensive ability and speed one. In this case, it worked out pretty good. Slash Rush, as you guys also know, gives you that uh, defense boost. So 170, 90, 80 in snow is like absurdly bulky. Not to mention in game, you're not always going to need its PDVs with Slush Rush because 73 speed in competitive is like, oh my God, it's not even that fast with Slush Rush. I have to run max speed. But in game, uh, there's not crazy choice scarf speed test out speed. So you can get away with running no speed EVs with Slush Rush and outspeed everything. And that means you can run more investment into bulk and then you take hits even better, um, which is definitely very, very good. Uh, sheer Force is for the raw damage boost. As you can see on screen, every move that is underlined is Sheer Force boosted. As for Satato, um, all the italicized moves are moves that don't miss with Hustle. And then as you can read, uh, Hustle plus Wide Lens does not miss. So you can use simple stuff like, you know, Hustle Ice Spinner and get plus one speed and not miss and get the plus one attack from Hustle, whatever it is. It's very, very strong. Um, but there are also a handful of moves that straight up don't miss. Uh, one of the best ones, I mean, besides the priority stuff, like Ice Shard and then Befuddle, which is a fairy type Shadow Sneak. Both of those don't miss, which is great. Stuff like First Impression, coverage like Stomping Tantrum and Smart Strike and Lash Out, all three of those don't miss. Um, Smart Strike also gives you plus one accuracy after you use it, so that's incredible. 
Uh, I gave that to them because they, they do have that horn, although I repurposed, or I guess retextured, what's the word for it? Re... I guess you could say I adjusted the text of, of Smart Strike to make sense for any Pokemon that can use its pointy bits, which to be fair is how it works in Vanilla, because shit like Dunsparce gets it and it doesn't have a horn. But regardless, Smart Strike is, is such a stupid move in Vanilla, man, I hate the distribution on that move. But um, yeah, because you plus one accuracy now and it can't miss itself, so not only is that just good steel coverage, but it also means you can use other moves after and not miss, period. So you don't even read wide lens at that point. Um, so there's tons and tons and tons of ways to work around Hustle now, it's a very, very good ability. And one of the strongest ways at the end of the game, or not the end of the game, but closer to the level you evolve at, is is uh, Avalanche uh, as a TM. So at 5 badges, you're going to be roughly... Um, the average cap per is roughly 40, roughly low 40, as early as 38, as late as 45. So, as you can see on screen, that's this is the little list of all the boss fights in the game, but... You can check that out when you're done with this video if you haven't already, but um, Avalanche, I mean, it's incredible. It's 140 base power when you move last and get hit. Of course, you do have to take a hit, but <laughs> because of how bogey of I Lights the title is, you can run, like, max HP, max defense, hustle, Avalanche, and one-shot things, like, pretty easily without any attack EVs because it's such a strong move with the plus one attack from hustle. Speaking of, 83 attack with hustle is incredibly strong. It's... I believe 1.75 times the base that is what? one point? No, that's... Is that 1.3? Might be more close to double. I'm just gonna do the math now. I'm curious. I always forget the my head calcs with the stats sometimes with the boosting abilities. Okay, 290, 291. So we have to hit 436. Which, yeah, that's gotta be like that's super high. Yeah, that's like 150 base attack. Yeah, okay, so it's closer to double instead of 1.75. Um, is it? I don't know. Whatever, man. You, you guys get the point. Okay, it's really strong. Uh, obviously, the Titan also has that boosting ability in Sheer Force, which is a 30% boost and is a uh, much less limited pool of moves. Um, however, Hustle has, has, definitely has its merits over Sheer Force in this round hack, at least. Uh, also, stuff like Flip Turn doesn't miss, and yes, I did get them Flip Turn. I know they don't actually swim, but I try to give every Pokemon at least one pivot move via TM, and this was the only one I really saw on them personally. Uh, I think it's cool enough. It makes enough sense. Um, they still have that little tail that they can use, whatever. Um, and they do look relatively agile. I mean, they get Slush Rush, and they have like a pretty good speed stat, given how fucking huge they are, so I think it fits fine for them to be able to use Flip Turn. Um, and that's also great with Hustle early on, so tons of great options with Hustle, right? Um, lunge as well, Lunge also won't miss, and it also drops attack and special attack, but yeah, Zotato's great, Slush Rush in with a Violet, whatever, I mean, there's so many different ways you can run Zotato up until level 40, or past level 40, and then Wimp Out uh, is not supposed to just be a bad ability, it's actually a really good one when you have access to Movie Learner and, you know, all of these tools to prep with, um, you're definitely going to want to take advantage of Wimp Out for that free pivot once in a while on Team Locked. If you don't know what that is, uh, read the description. If you're new here and you haven't yet done that, there's a lot of text explaining what Team Locked is and how it's supposed to work. So in situations like that, you would definitely take advantage of Wimp Out as well. So three great abilities on bo all, both of them. And yeah, so Titan is this absolute behemoth. Made 143 with Sheer Force, very, very, very strong. Uh, it's got tons of reliable physical ice moves now. So Ice Crew Crash is 95 uh, power, 100% accuracy. Um, ice Hammer is very late game, but it is very strong. Uh, I would say those are your two most reliable ice, like Sheer Force moves. Of course, you've also got Ice Fang, but there's no real reason to use Ice Fang over Ice Crew Crash once you run Sheer Force. Um, because you're getting rid of the effect anyways. Ice Spinner with stuff like Intimidate is very good because Ice Spinner, like I said, gives you plus one speed still, but well, not still, but it gives you plus one speed. Um, you got tons of great coverage. Uh, not all of it is Shift Force boosted, but it's all very, very good regardless um, because of course you have two other abilities and you still have 143 base attack. So, you know, you don't need that Shift Force boost a lot of the time anyways. Um, but of course you've got, all, I mean, 100% accurate Aqua Tail, 100% accurate Iron Tail, all, most moves in this game are 100% accurate, so you can check out a full list of those. The only move here in this entire learn set that isn't 100% accurate that I can see is uh, Triple Axle, that's the only one actually. Yeah, I just double check. Yep, it's the only one. So. Um, that you need to hold wide lens for. Triple Axel's main use, uh, well, first of all, flavor-wise, I mean, it's, <laughs> dude, fucking Frozmoth gets it, you know? As long as it's, like, relatively agile-looking, I think it can have it, in terms of an ice type. If it's a relatively agile-looking ice type, and obviously the Titan doesn't look agile, but, I mean, the guy literally has Slush Rush, so I think it fits fine enough for them to get Triple Axel. Um, and then mostly you would just be using that for, um with wide lens, with a uh, slush rush or something, or just something that you're faster than that you need to, you know, uh, say, for example, they have multi-scale or sturdy or energy shield or some ability like that. Triple Axel's good in those situations. Otherwise, you're better off using Icicle Crash with Sheer Force or Ice Breaker. Ice Breaker is um, Ice type Wicked Blow. All Wicked Blow variants in this game can't be used twice in a row. So Ice Breaker and Brutal Bash both fail if you try to use them twice in a row, but they're very good, you know, one, you know, use it and then switch your move up or use it and then switch out type of deals. 
superpower is physical fighting type Draco Meteor, that's very strong. Strength and Brutal Swing are both rock and dark type double edges. Headlong Rush is still Headlong Rush, so you've got tons of great coverage there. Flavor-wise, I definitely see it using all of these, like, just big Unga physical moves because it's just, it's just this giant whale that likes to, you know, charge and hurt, you know, kill shit. I mean, it, obviously it's not actually that aggressive. It, I think it is relatively peaceful, at least with his babies and stuff, but it's, you know, it still fits to have, like, these types of moves to me, um, personally. And yeah, an Ice Hammer is very, very good. Ice Hammer is, um, Ice-type Double Edge, and it's Shift Force boosted, so all of the Double Edge variants are double, uh, Shift Force boosted for the most part. In this case, they all are, with Strength, Brutal Swing, Ice Hammer, and Double Edge itself. So those are all Shift Force boosted options. You've also got Terra, so if you pulled, like, any, you know, uh, Terra is supposed to be RNG'd in this game, so any Terra type is good, right? It's versus, uh, AI. I'm not gonna talk about it too much in detail here, because it would just be kind of going off track, but, um... Just know that if you pull like a cool Terra type, like any Terra type, you can run stab moves. Even if you don't have a move of that type, you can run Terra Blast. But with cool, you know, it'd be pretty cool to get like Bug or Ground or just some cool type. You know, any type really. There's some tons of ways you can take advantage of Terra in a ROM hack versus AI. So very, very cool overall. Um, tons of great utility. Obviously, it's very, very tanky. It's got reliable recovery in the form of Slack Off, um, which pretty much every single Pokemon in this hack gets access to that tool uh, to, re to reliable recovery, which is useful when you need it with Movie Lunar. You've got debuffing moves like Befriend and Charm, uh, Befriend being Special Charm, uh, Stockpile, stuff like that. Um, oh crap, my bracelet just got stuck on my. Alright, I'll just fix that after the video. I think we're good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's basically it. Uh, Belly Drum is at the very end of the game. Only legal for seven boss fights. It's pretty crazy if you get the, you know, the hail up. It, you can even just use it straight up with, like, Belly Drum plus Ice Shard. You could do, like, Hostile Satatl, a Violite, Belly Drum, Ice Shard if you wanted to with Befuddle as well. You got two priority moves right there. Pulling, like, Terra Fairy would be kind of funny because you do have a lot of Fairy moves, like Hoodwink and, and Play Rough and stuff. But yeah, uh, all of which are Shear Boys boosted, by the way. Uh, or at least uh, Hoodwink and Play Rough are. But yeah, that's about it. Um could talk about a few i mean again intimidate over thick fat thick fat is already covered by it's not that good you know in a rom hack context um it's not useless or anything but it's just not very good compared to something as cool and useful as intimidate um yeah thank you for listening shout out to you if you made it to the end leave a comment down below if you did and um i'll be back for more coming up peace